joined with um, the Minister of Agriculture and Land, Justice and Public Safety, and Attorney General PEI, and MLA for Stanhope Marshfield, Mr. Boyce Thompson. How are you today, Boyce? I'm uh, pretty good. I'm pretty good, guys. It's great to have you here, Boyce. And uh, I've known Boyce for a long time. In fact, uh, we've known each other from ballet. So it's been quite a number <laughs> of years that we've known each other. You're, you're uh, a much better dancer than I am. <laughs> well, just to clarify, our daughters were in dance. We were quiet That's parents. Right waiting patiently at the door. Uh, <laughs> thanks for taking some time today, boys. I know you're busy with the very complicated portfolios and you're still in the house. I just wanted to ask a few questions. You've been now an uh, elected member for a year. Tell us a little bit about that journey and what it's been like, um, you know, coming into this public arena and, and having a very, well, a couple of pretty important portfolios. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been great. Um, of course, uh, no one expected uh, COVID or, or a hurricane during during your first year of office, but uh, it, it's been great. Uh, I really enjoy the two departments that I have. Um, agriculture, of course, I'm quite comfortable with with an agriculture background myself. And uh, but justice and public safety has been uh, very interesting for me. Uh, I, I, it's it's intriguing. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts in justice that uh, just makes it very interesting, and I'm enjoying every day of it. And as you've got a pretty good grounding in agriculture. Has it been uh, difficult to kind of take on this new portfolio that's now become a really pivotal, you know, through all this COVID situation? Has that been a big adjustment uh, on top of it, a very complicated portfolio with what's going on in agriculture? Yeah, um, well, justice and public safety has been <laughs> at the forefront a lot of the, the time. Uh, you know, Hurricane Dorian, uh, we were, uh, EMO was activated there, and then we had the the malware uh, cyber attack, uh, which we kind of all forgot about. That was in February. And then, of course, COVID. And uh, it's it's the staff that are in the department that uh, make it uh, enjoyable and make it easy. Uh, we have uh, tremendous people that uh, run in each, each directors in each department. And uh, it's a great opportunity to work with a couple of great deputies in, in, in a short period of time. So it's, it's made the transition in, Justice and public safety, nice. So obviously no politician or elected official expects to come into a crisis slash pandemic type of deal. So how are you able to kind of manage your portfolio before COVID and then now during COVID kind of amplified? Um, and how are you able to kind of manage the pressures and stresses of that? Well, it, it has been, <laughs> I'll not, I'll not lie, it has been stressful. There's been, you know, there's been some sleepless nights over the past, uh, few months with COVID and uh, the added pressure and we had to make a lot of decisions uh, without a playbook. Uh, there's, there's, no, <laughs> there's no playbook and uh, we're, we're just trying to figure it out with uh, the best information from Dr. Morrison who has been uh, the key player in this, in this role and uh, she's, been, uh, she's been terrific on, on, uh, on her guidance and um, you know we just have to uh, it took a lot of common sense approach to things. And I think that's where uh, this government is, is strong is in its common sense and it's uh, trying to, to get things done. I think most people would agree that the uh, stable sort of constant communication, which you're a big part of, really helped to um, calm nerves at a difficult time. Now, if you look at the capital markets, my sense is, well, in fact, big business has recovered. We're, we're up to new highs in the, uh, in the indices, but I think small business is going to have a little bit more challenge. As you come through this last stages of the, your second legislative sitting, any reflections on how that experience has been going? You've got uh, two now under your belt, two short ones. Um, yep. How's that been? Uh, it's the first, <laughs> every session is, is getting, uh, more, I'm getting more comfortable with, of course. Um, the, I, I didn't have the, uh, the, uh, experience of being in the house before this uh, a lot of my colleagues were opposition so they uh, they had the feel of the house and uh, all of a sudden I was put in a place where I had uh, two portfolios and uh, questions firing at you and it was it was pretty stressful the first time to uh, go arounds but uh, I'm very comfortable with it now and uh, it's 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 a great experience and a great honor to sit, sit in the legislature and like just before we hit record too, we kind of talked about what a post-COVID world might look like. And since agriculture is so vitally important to Prince Edward Island, 
what do you think that will look like in terms of uh, the business aspect of agriculture moving forward? I, I, I really think agriculture has a huge opportunity to be the first industry in, in this country to be, uh, to, to rebound and to, uh, to flourish. Um, it, it took a, a few bare shelves at the grocery stores during a pandemic to, uh, to give Canadians uh, re realization that food is essential, uh, farmers are essential. The public trust has swung back into the, the farmer's uh, hands again. And I think with the COVID and the realization of the importance of food, I think I read it in the Globe and Mail a uh, quote from someone where we were, with all our sophistication, uh, we were still just six inches in, of topsoil and a farmer away from uh, disaster. So uh, we still have to feed the world. And uh, I think people realize that now. And, uh, and, and they, they really do care where their food comes from. And uh, I think Prince Arn Island has a huge opportunity to be the first out of the gate. Uh, we, we know our tourism isn't going to be great this year and we don't even know what, what, what it's going to be like next year and our fishery obviously this year is going to struggle so of our three main primary industries on this island agriculture has an opportunity i mean we, we were lucky here uh during covid that we had uh processing um we had our three major processors our our, our atlantic beef plant our adl our dairy and our cavendish farms our french fries um, without those, it, it would have been uh, a different story, but we have those and I think we have a great opportunity. You know, I think uh, as a consumer through this period, food, food security has been an issue. You mentioned that with the stock shelves, but I think food sourcing and traceability is also a consideration. I think more people now are wanting to support local. Uh, you see that with the fishers right now, but I think you see it in the agriculture sector too. How do farmers pivot? Because it is going to be difficult, especially maybe for the agricultural, some of the crops or maybe surpluses. Uh, how can farmers pivot? It's going to be a difficult year, but how do they come out of this uh, stronger and better positioned to feed the world again? Uh, I, I think it's modernization is one thing uh, with traceability. Uh, there's a great opportunity to uh, to add the technology to our businesses, uh, our agricultural businesses now. And people want to buy local, and that is absolutely great, and we want to want to focus on that. But uh, we have to re also remember that Prince Edward Island is an exporting province, uh, half a billion dollars of agriculture exports a year. So um, buy local is great, but our population is only about 160,000. So uh, we got to support within, but we also have to, uh, to export. So, um, but I think technology is the way and uh, efficiencies with, uh, and we have to be environmentally conscious now and we have to uh, do everything that we can to uh, modernize and make it efficient. And just before we wrap up, last one last question. What's your favorite part about being an elected official so far? <laughs> My favorite part. And not including the COVID cycle, because that probably has its challenges. So. Um, you know what? I like coming to work every day and uh, with all the, I have a lot of staff and I, I, I like the uh, interaction I have with the staff. Uh, you, you actually get to see, uh, see big, the big picture, see how things are happening. Uh, you know, agriculture is, is uh, we're always pushing the boundary to, to make things better and to improve uh, the industry and, and justice, it's, it's the same. It's about, it's about people. And uh, I think that's uh, what I enjoy the most about. Well, we uh, thank you for your time today, Minister Thompson. I know you've got a lot in your schedule. It's great to connect with you and get your perspectives in the legislature. The, uh, the coming months, I mean, I'm pretty excited that the economy is recovering, and I think the government's got us on a good footing. So I look forward to see what uh, your government brings forth in the next uh, couple of quarters to really stimulate all sectors of the economy, not just agriculture. And uh, yeah. that, I'm sure, will be rolled out soon. But, uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time today. No, I appreciate it. And, and with that, I think... It's important, and you guys are 
big thinkers and think outside the box. And I think that's going to be important uh, going forward <laughs> post COVID. Uh, we we got to do things differently and, uh, and uh, that's the way we're going to succeed. Right on. Well, we'll, thanks, we'll certainly have you, we'll certainly have you on again. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. Take care. Thank you.